Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today is all about Orca Basics. So if you're brand new to Orca Slicer, or even 3D printing for that matter, this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through exactly what you need to know to get started printing with Orca Slicer. And without getting overwhelmed, and I'm not going to be skipping over any steps. This is honestly the video that I wish I had when I first got started. Because most tutorials out there either assume you already know something, or they leave something out that's super important that's going to cause you a lot of failed prints in the future. So here's what we're going to cover. First, I'm going to go over how to import models, get them in the right spot, and how to prep them for printing. And then, what some of those settings are, like supports and quality and other things like that. We're going to go over this, and I'm going to help you spot mistakes to help you stop wasting time and filament on those failed prints that could possibly be happening. So by the end of this video, you are going to feel confident in Orca Slicer, even if it's the very first time that you've opened the program. So, let's not waste any more time and get started with Orca Slicer Basics. Alright. Let's start with the very first thing. How do I get a model into Orca Slicer? This is one of the most common beginner questions, and I totally get it. Because without a model, you have nothing to slice, or to print for that matter. So, let me show you three simple ways to import into Orca Slicer. The first way is click the little cube icon in the top toolbar. That is your import button. And you'll get a file window to pop up, then just Find the model on your computer, and then click open. Now, the second option is just you click and drag the file from your desktop or computer straight onto the build plate. It's pretty easy. And honestly, this is the way that I do it most of the time. Then, the third option is the more traditional option. By going to the top left corner of the screen, going to File, Menu, then choosing Import, then select the file type that you're importing. Then you're going to select that file, and then click Import. Now once the model shows up in your workspace, that's when the real fun starts. Because now we can start moving around and getting things printing. But before we do that, let me show you how to move around your workspace so you can view your model from any angle. The first way is to orbit around the model itself. Now all you have to do is right click and drag and that will spin around your model, or orbit around your model. Then, to be able to move your camera from side to side, or pan your camera, all you need to do is left click and drag as well. And you can see how we can move around from side to side. And the last thing is to be able to zoom in and out. And all you need to do is use your scroll wheel on your mouse. Scrolling forward, zooms in, and you guessed it, scrolling backwards, well, it zooms out. Getting used to this will make your life a lot easier, especially when you're inspecting your prints or making small adjustments. All right, now let's talk about moving the model itself. If you just click and drag on the model, you can slide it around on the build plate. But if you want more control, you need to use the Move tool, and it's in the top toolbar right here. Click that, and you'll see some arrows appear. This is called a gizmo. You can drag the model along the red, blue, or green arrows to move it more precisely. And if you need to, you can type in the exact values for the X, Y, and Z. And also, that is what the red, green, and blue is representing. The next thing is rotation. Sometimes your model imports facing the wrong way. Click the Rotate tool, and you'll see those colored rings appear all around your model. This is also the Rotate Gizmo. Click and drag one of the nodes to rotate your model around that specific axis. And here's a quick tip. If you drag your mouse near the center of your model, it will snap your model at 45 degree steps. But if you drag your mouse on the outside of those rings, it will rotate it more smoothly by individual degrees. And now, for scaling. If your model is too big, too small, or it just needs to be resized, you'll need to click the Scale tool. And you'll see these little boxes appear. And guess what? This is the Scale Gizmo. You can adjust one axis at a time, just like the others, 
or you can grab these cyan boxes to scale the whole thing evenly. Once you've got your model sized, positioned, and facing the right way, you are good to go. From here, we can move on to our print settings and tell the printer exactly how to bring your model to life. Let's talk about the settings that actually control how to print. And I know, this part can look a little overwhelming at first. There are a lot of tabs and sliders and settings, and it's not always obvious what they do. But don't worry, I'm going to keep this very simple for you. Let's start with quality. This is all about how smooth or detailed your prints turn out. The main thing here is to look at your layer height first. This controls how thick each printed layer is. And here's a nice rule to help you understand. Lower numbers equals more detail, but it takes longer. Higher numbers print faster, but you get less detail. So if you want something quick, like a test part, go ahead and print something at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And that's pretty standard. But if you want something really detailed, like a miniature or something decorative, you can go lower, like a 0.12 or even down to a 0.08 millimeter layer height. Next, let's look at strength, which covers things like wall loops and infill. Wall loops is how many solid layers go around the outside of your model. Infill is the pattern inside your model. I like to think of it as an internal scaffolding to be able to keep everything supported. 10 to 15% infill is fine for most things, but if you need something stronger, go higher. Just keep this in mind. More infill uses more filament, and that takes more time. Now, let's talk speed. Orca Slicer gives you presets that balance speed and quality. If you're new, I recommend sticking to the default profiles for now. They're really well tuned, but if you're really curious, you can click through the tabs to see what changes when you switch from a standard to a draft or a high quality profile. And here's something a lot of people ask. Once you find settings you like, how do you even save them? Or do you just have to write it down somewhere? And this is pretty easy. All you have to do once you have all of the settings that you want to keep, click the little save disk icon to the right. Then you're going to get a dialog box popping up saying what you want to name this setting. After you've named your setting, then you have two choices. This can be a user preset to where every single time you open up Orca Slicer, this is something that you can select. Or you can do preset inside project. And what this will do is this just saves it inside the specific project that you're in at the moment. So now that we got that out of the way, let's take a quick minute to show you a side-by-side -side comparison to help you see what the real difference is between layer heights and what it looks like. On the left, I've got a simple sphere printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And on the right, the same model printed at a 0.08 millimeter layer height. You'll notice that the 0.2 millimeter print, the top of the sphere has a bit of a flat look. That is something called stair-stepping, or plateauing. This is the result of thick layers stacking up on each other. It still looks good, but it's a lot more noticeable on rounded or slightly sloped surfaces. Now let's look at the 0.08 millimeter print. The surface is much smoother, and those steps are a lot less visible. That's the benefit of using a smaller layer height. So if you're printing something where detail really does matter, go with a lower layer height. If you're just printing a quick part, or you don't mind some visible lines, the faster 0.2 millimeter setting is totally fine too. This is really down to preference. All right, so let's go ahead and slice our model. When you slice, Orca Slicer takes your 3D model and turns it into G-code. The instructions your printer will follow to build your part or model one layer at a time. Once it's sliced, you'll see a preview of the entire print. Now this is the thing. This area is where most beginner print failures can be avoided. If you just take a few minutes to double check a few things. So let's walk through what to look for. First, look at the color preview. Each color represents a different type of movement, material, or specific part of the 3D print. Solid parts of the model will be one color. Supports, if they're turned on, will usually be a different color. 
travel moves and infills show up differently too. You can see the color legend in the corner and see what each one means. But the most important thing right now is to check our first layer. This should always be the first thing that you check after you sliced your model. All you need to do is drag the layer bar all the way to the bottom. This will reveal the first layer. If the first layer doesn't look solid, or if it seems like the model just is barely touching the build plate, this is a huge red flag. It means your model is slightly tilted, or a tiny part of it is touching the build plate surface. That can lead to poor adhesion, or the model will just pop off the build plate halfway through the print. So before we move on, this is a good time to go back and use the Lay Flat tool. It's in the top toolbar right here. Click it, and then you are going to see these oblong circles all over the model. You typically want to click the largest circle because that is going to be the flattest area for your model to lay on. In doing this, that will make sure your print has a strong, solid base layer, which is the key for a successful 3D print. Now that we have this laying flat, let's slice it again and check the preview one more time. If everything looks good on your first layer, the next thing to check is for floating parts, higher up in the model. These are often called floating islands. You'll usually spot them by scrubbing through the layers and noticing small pieces that are not connected to anything and just floating in space. If you see something like this, it means that a part of your model is going to try to print in midair, and that is where supports come in. So let's go over how to enable supports and what kind of supports will work best. All right, now that we've spotted those floating islands in the preview, let's talk about how to add supports so your prints don't fail halfway through. Supports are temporary structures that your printer builds underneath the overhangs or those floating islands. Basically, anything that would otherwise be printing into thin air. Once the print is done, you remove the supports on your model, then you're good to go. So let's go ahead and turn on our supports. In the left-hand sidebar, let's look for the tab labeled Support. Click that, then go ahead and check the box that says Enable Supports. Orca will automatically detect the areas that need extra help and generate supports for them. You'll also see options for different support types. Most of the time, tree supports are a great choice. They're lighter, they use less filament, and they're easier to remove than the traditional blocky supports. You can always experiment later, but for now, let's go ahead with Tree Auto. This is a safe and smart default to go with. Now slice the model again and take a look at the preview. You should now see new structures holding up your parts that were floating. They'll usually be a different color and they'll connect from the build plate up to the overhang area. If they look good, great. But if they look too dense, in weird places, or missing altogether, you can always switch to manual supports and place them exactly where you need. But that will require you to paint on supports. Now I'm not going to go over that in this video, but if you want to try to figure it out on your own, right here is the paint on supports button. And one last tip, if you want to see where your supports need to go, you can turn on show overhangs. And to do that, all you need to do is go to the very top toolbar, click on the little hamburger icon, go all the way down to View, then all the way over to Show Overhangs, and then click that. Orbit underneath your model, you'll be able to see all of the areas that you need to have supports are now red. Now we've got our supports in place, and our first layer is solid. We're almost ready to hit print. But before we hit print, let's do one quick final check in the preview window. Use the layer slider to scroll through the print from bottom to top. You're looking for anything that seems off, like parts printing before they even have supports, strange gaps, or floating islands that we might not have caught. If everything looks solid, especially that first layer, you're in great shape. Now let's go ahead and export the file so we can print it. Now, you don't need to connect a printer to do this. You can slice, preview, and export at any time. All we need to do is click the little drop-down arrow on the Print button in the top right corner of the screen. Here, we want to select Export G-Code. 
Then we're going to choose where we want to save our file. And if you're using an SD card or a USB thumb drive, go ahead and export it directly to that once it's connected to your computer. Then plug that into your printer and then you will be ready to select it and hit print. If you're using a printer with Wi-Fi or cloud capabilities, there are options to send the file directly. But for now, we're keeping this simple and local. And that's it. Now that you have your sliced file saved to your SD card or your USB thumb drive, you are ready to put that into your printer and hit print. And there we go. So you have just walked through the full process of getting started with Orca Slicer. You've learned how to import a model, adjust and dial in those print settings, slice it, double check for any issues, then export it for printing. So take your time with these steps, I will say that. The more you use Orca Slicer, the more of a second nature that this is going to become. And trust me, double checking those things like floating islands and first layers are going to save you so much time and frustration in the long run. So it's good to build those habits now. Oh, and before you head out, I wanted to invite you to my new free community. It's a welcoming space where you can ask questions and actually get helpful answers without any judgment or gatekeeping that you might find in some other groups online. Everybody starts somewhere and we're all here to learn and help each other grow. And that's what this community is all about. There's a link down below if you want to join, and I hope to see you there. Other than that, I just want to wish you a great day, and I'll go ahead and see you in this video right here.